everyone, I'm Chris O'Neill from So The Distance. I'm so glad you're here because today we're gonna to talk about making projects out of panels. And specifically, we are going to use the Riley Blake monthly panels. So I have one here that we're going to use, but I made up all my samples of the projects out of the February panel. You can make these out of any panel in the line. There are so many cute designs and there's coordinating fabrics. So I'll show you how to make five different projects, including two placemats. So if you wanna make them all placemats, you can do that too. We are going to be making a pillow, two placemats, like I said, a little mug rug or wall hanging, and a table runner out of the panels. And I'm gonna break this up into chapters so you'll be able to see it. I'm gonna be using the March panel and all of this stuff came to me from Missouri Star Quilt Company. I have recently partnered with them, so I do have an affiliate link for you. And I'll put that in the first comment below. You'll be able to see that. It'll also be in the description and of course on my blog as always. And a big thank you to them for sending me all this stuff that you can see here for this video. So there's a few things you wanna consider first before we even get started uh, when working with panels. The first thing is if you want to wash these beforehand, that's fine to do. Just make sure you wash all of the fabric you're gonna be using, the backings, whatever it may be. This is especially important in case you are planning on washing the projects and you don't like that crinkled look because this is cotton fabric, it will shrink. Next thing I think is really important when working with panels, at least in my opinion. I press the panel really, really well and then I starch the heck out of it. I will soak it with starch and usually just Niagara or whatever's on sale and just make it so it's very wet and then I let it dry overnight. I know, I know it's an extra step and you want to get sewing and I get that completely. To me it's worth it because it makes it super crisp. It will take those fibers and just bring it all together. Now when you're using starch you want to be really careful that you also don't use water or steam or anything like that when you're pressing it at all because it'll get rid of the starch. And finally, the third thing, and I promise we're getting to the fun part in a minute. The third thing is to decide which panels you're gonna be using for which project. As I go through the projects, I'll explain some of the parameters and why it's important to really think about that. It's just something to consider before you start a project without really thinking it through with all six of these placemat panels. Just a thought. Let's get started. We're going to be making the pillow and here it is in the upside down in the February fabric. We're gonna be making this of course in the St. Patrick's Day fabric, but you can do it with any of these wonderful placemat panels. The first thing you're gonna do is rough cut all of the panel pieces apart or placemat pieces, I guess. And I just do this with a pair of scissors and just roughly cut around these. Don't worry about them not necessarily being straight yet, any of that stuff. Once you have them all cut, we're ready to go and make our pillow. I have all six of my panels or Placemats, why do I keep saying that? Placemats cut apart. And I'm gonna find the one I wanna use for the pillow, which is this one right here. So before we do anything else, don't worry about it being a little wonky, it's gonna be okay. We're going to quilt it. And to do that, I'm gonna take a backing piece that's a little bit bigger and batting and layer this on top of that. So I have three layers here. The backing of the pillow front, this isn't the backing of the pillow, this is just of the pillow front and it's a lightweight cotton that I have. Then the batting and then the placemat panel. I'm just gonna smooth it out. You can pin it or baste it if you want to, you do not have to. Now that we have this set up to quilt, we're gonna mark the lines that we wanna quilt. I use this tool by Sobia Quilts, which you'll see when we're at the machine. So I don't have to mark all my lines, but you can mark all your lines if you want. You can use masking tape, you can use whatever you want, even a marking pen. So I'm gonna line my 45 degree angle mark up on the inner border of this panel. And I'm gonna make sure I can get across the panel. Let's see, we'll go to here. And I'm gonna mark it and I'm just gonna use I think this is called a hair marker, maybe? I think that's what it's called. It's this tool that you can mark with without leaving a mark, it leaves a crease. And all I do is mark it like this. And yes, I'm gonna sew directly or quilt directly over the words. It's gonna be okay. Now, depending on how I wanted them, I can move it over an inch or whatever and keep going. But again, because I'm using this tool, I don't need to do that. I like to make double quilting lines. I think it really looks fancy. Let me show you my sample. You can see that I did that here. It looks so pretty. I love that look and I think it is great for a pillow like this. So let's go to the machine and start quilting and I'll show you how I do it. 
I'm gonna line up my walking foot, the center of it, on that line. I'm gonna adjust my stitch length to about 3.2. I like it nice and big. And I have matching or coordinating thread. It's like a beige that goes with this background. And I'm gonna start sewing. Once I have my first stitch line down, I'm gonna stitch, I don't know how much, maybe a half inch, quarter inch? I don't know. It's whatever the spot on my walking foot, <laughs> that distance. So I line it up with this little notch here on my walking foot. And I'm lining it up on that stitch line I just made. Here we go. That gives me that cool double line. Next, I'm gonna take the tool and I'm gonna line up the line on this with my uh, first stitch line. And then I put that right up against my walking foot. Next, I can use my walking foot as a guide or I can use the tool. And I'm just gonna keep going. So I have all of these lines done one direction. I marked it again and now I'm going to stitch this way. Okay, it is all quilted and I gave it a good press. Look at how pretty and I love the back. Look at that. Oh, it's so nice. I love it. So now we're gonna trim it up and this is the part you've been waiting for, I'm sure, because you can even tell how wonky it is. But what's great about these panels is it makes it pretty easy to trim down because this is all kind of not directional necessarily. I'll show you what I mean. <laughs> now it's really helpful to have a giant ruler like this one. This is huge, what is this? This is 24 and a half by 12 and a half. But if you don't have one, you can still do this. I'm gonna set this one aside, I'll show it in a moment. Right now I'm going to use my 12 and a half to get this lined up. So I'm gonna turn this this way. And the important part that I want lined up are these words, because that's what everybody's gonna see in your pillow. And you can see how wonky everything is around it, especially down here, you can see that. But no worries, we're gonna take care of it. All right, so we're gonna take our ruler and we're looking at these words and lining them up on our lines on our ruler. Now, I also wanna make sure that I get enough clearance over here and I'm going to even go in beyond that green border that they give us. If I want it to be as big as possible, I'll pay attention to that, but I, I don't want any of this green in it, this pillow. All right, so I'm gonna keep looking, moving the ruler and I'm looking at this side and this side here. Now I'm gonna take my rotary cutter and cut that edge right there, this side and partially up this side. Again, making sure everything's straight, but not trusting that this line here, this green border is straight because it's not, I guarantee you it's not. <laughs> I'm just gonna veer off there. I know this is a nice straight angle. Next, I'm going to turn this whole thing around. All right, after I turned it around like this, we're going to line it up and get the next side. And I'm gonna worry about this edge now. So I'll just take my smaller ruler and line up the edge we cut, because I know that's straight. Pull it down here, making sure that's lined up straight on a line. And it is, and I'm just gonna cut this edge next. Now I know that's straight. I can go in here and square this up with this edge and this edge and get this edge cut. With these panels, you can't be too married to the actual size of the block or what you think it's supposed to be. You have to be very flexible with this. And I know for a lot of people that's really hard, but it's super important with these panels because you just drive yourself insane trying to get everything straight. All right, so the next cut, I wanna make sure I get this edge. I'm going to line up my straight edge here and my straight edge here on lines on my ruler. I'm gonna go one dot over. Again, not being married to the size because I see how this curves in up here and I wanna avoid that. Now we will have seam allowance, so it's not a huge deal if you get some of this green, but I don't know, I just feel better not getting any of it. All right, everything's lined up, I'm gonna start cutting. Just like that. And then turn this around and get this last bit by lining up using lines on my ruler to make sure everything's straight and wonderful. And there is your pillow panel top. Look at how pretty, I love it. All right, we have our pillow. 
top, right? It's all ready to go. Our next step is to get a backing for this. Now you can do a envelope fold backing. I have a video on that. I also have a video on how to make custom pillow inserts too for this, which works wonderfully. However, if you don't have any of that, it's okay. We're gonna still make this pillow a little bit of a different way by making it so it's not a removable cover. So this particular pillow that we made measures 17, well, that was lucky that it was exactly 17 <laughs> by 11 and three quarters. Not so lucky. No, 10 and three quarters. So 17 by 10 and three quarters. That's the size I'm going to cut the backing that I'm going to use. So I have my piece cut. I'm going to put right sides together, lining it up. I'm going to secure it with some clips. You can use pins too if you want. Oh, I forgot. We're going to make an opening and I'm going to put the opening like right here. So let me mark that before I start clipping. I'm going to make it like right down here and I'm going to make it big enough that I can get my hand in. Actually, I'm going to make it a little bigger. It's about five inches. All right. So I know that that's my start and stop spot. And then you can just clip all around. Now that it's clipped, I'm going to start sewing here at my first mark back stitch and sew all the way around pivoting at the corners. I like to use a little bit of a bigger seam allowance. You don't have to, you can use a quarter inch. I just find it more manageable if I use a little bit bigger. I even sometimes go up to a half an inch. So I'm gonna do that and meet you back here. All right, now that this is all sewn around, my opening is here and I'm gonna move this because I think it blends in. Let's move that out of the way. I'm gonna clip my corners and it's hard to see. I probably should have used, oh, here you can see on the back. All I'm gonna do is cut at an angle and then taper them in. Just cutting at an angle and tapering in. And I'm gonna do that on all sides. All right, it is all trimmed down. If you want to, you can trim your seam allowance. I don't like to, I think it gives it a little more body. Now we're gonna flip it to the right side out. I'm gonna push out my points. All we have to do now is give it a good press and stuff it and close up our opening. All right, once you get it as full as you want, and I like to have squishy pillows, <laughs> you can just clip this or even glue this, fold it in and glue it or clip it or both. <laughs> and then I like to hand stitch it closed, but you can absolutely take this to the machine and just stitch right along that edge to close it up. And that's all you do. And then you have a pillow. And I do have one made right here that has the envelope fold. Isn't it cute? With the same, here, let me turn it around. With the same panel. Oh, I love, love, love how this turned out. And I do like the envelope fold too, but of course you can do it this way. They're so cute. They're gonna make great gifts for my friends. The next project is this adorable little mini quilt or you could even make a mug rug if you want to make it smaller. And the one I chose for this is uh, this particular placemat section because I can cut this in to be a lot smaller. I can even go into the coins or gold coins here and it's still going to look right. And this is going to make a really nice mug rug or mini wall hanging. I'm also going to show you how to bind this one so it's a little different. So to do this I'm going to do the exact same thing I did before where I'm going to quilt this first and then trim it down. But because I'm making this a lot smaller I don't need all this extra stuff in it and I don't want to waste the thread and the batting and the backing. So we're going to cut it down a little bigger than we want our final project. So I'm going to cut this down to 12 and a half inches wide and then we'll go from there and see how much I want to do for the length. And any of our rulers have a center mark. Mine has it right here. So I'm going to pick the center and I'm going by the design. I'm not worried about these borders. I have my center point on my ruler and I'm also looking at the pot of gold here and making sure that it's centered. Again, we're going to be straightening it up a little bit better after we quilt it so it's not super important but you kind of want to get a good idea. Just to make it easy I'm going to do the 12 and a half inches wide because it's the side of my ruler. All right now I'm going to turn it and just see where we're at and lining it up. And I'm just gonna get rid of these borders so I don't even have to worry about them. Right. And also remember your seam allowance anytime you're making anything like this. So we will have a binding that will go over the edge so you don't wanna get super, super close to the edge. But I think that's a really good size to get started with. So next you're gonna take your backing, place it right side down, and then a scrap piece of batting. And then I'm just gonna layer this on top and actually, I probably could cut these down a little bit more to save some fabric. Let's do that. Because I could use this little scrap in something, right? Just 
just like that. All right. This is ready to be quilted exactly how we did the pillow. Line it up or quilt however you want to. You can even practice your free motion quilting on this. And I have one I already quilted and I just did a diagonal design. I didn't do the double lines, but you could. So you can see it is ready to go. Here's the back and I'm going to trim it up. Now I'm gonna turn my mat over just because I like to use my lines on my ruler instead of the mat. So I'm gonna line it up, looking at the design, seeing where my center is, there's a spot here that should be about level, which is the top of the pot of gold. I'll line that up. We'll do 10 by nine, so 10 wide, nine in the length. So to do 10 wide, I know half of 10 is five. So I'm gonna line that five line up where I feel it is the middle. And I'm also using the pot of gold section here. So just to eyeball it, you could measure, I suppose. You really want to, but I think that's about right. All right, I'm gonna cut this side. And then I'm gonna put my 10 inch line on this side. And that looks pretty good. I am cutting off some of those coins, but that's okay, because it's a great design for that. While I'm lining this up, I might as well go ahead and do the top here too. So I'm just gonna line this line up, my 10 inch down say about here and you can see it doesn't look straight does it but when we get it all trimmed up it will be and i'm gonna cut and cut look at how cute all right so what did we say i can't remember did i say nine i think i said 10 by nine i'll line up everything so it's nice and square we're gonna cut this and i'm gonna do it right by getting up and going around to cut it and there we have it now we're ready to bind this. And to do that, I like to use smaller strips when I am making a wall hanging and I'm gonna do single fold binding. So I cut strips that are an inch and a quarter wide. So after I cut my strips, I'm gonna cut off my salvage edges here. And I know I say that word wrong. That's just the way it's gonna have to be because I can't pronounce it. <laughs> I think it's my dialect, maybe, I'm not sure. Anyway, you know what I mean, these edges. We want those cut off. And we're gonna need two strips. And the way I figured out the math is I measured the perimeter of the little mini quilt. So I measured, we know actually, cause we cut it just now. This is 10 inch, 10 inch, nine inch, nine inch. We're gonna add all those numbers together and we're gonna get 38 inches. Then we're gonna add about 10 inches or so for joining and corners. And I like to give myself a lot more than I probably need, but for me, it makes me comfortable doing 10 inches on a project this size. So we need 48 inches. After I cut those off, I'm gonna go to my machine and I like to do a diagonal seam. And I eyeball this, but you don't have to, you can measure it. And I overlap a quarter inch and overlap a quarter inch. And then I'm gonna sew on that diagonal right there. Here, I'm gonna use a pen to show you. So I have quarter inch, quarter inch, it's overlapped, right sides together. And then I will sew this right here. Okay, diagonal right through there. I'm gonna do that and then I'll show you our next step. I'm gonna press that to set the seam. Always do that. I'm gonna check it to make sure it's good. And it is. And now I'm gonna cut off this portion right here and leaving a quarter inch seam allowance. So next I'm going to just open this seam and press it. This gives us a nice uh, flat finish and reduces the bulk. And then I'll trim off those dog ears. Okay, so the binding big long piece is ready to go. Next, we're going to clip it to this edge. And I like to you know, give myself a nice long tail here. You wanna have plenty of room. I'm just gonna clip it like this. And then I leave the rest hanging until I go to the machine and I'll show you what we do next. All right, here we are at the machine. I have my quarter inch foot on my machine. I'm gonna move my needle over. And then I have like a 2.00 stitch length because this is a little thick. And I'm gonna start sewing about right here. I wanna give myself a lot of space up here for joining. So I'm gonna put this in. I'm gonna take my clips off and I'm gonna make sure that this is straight and I kind of just tug it, make sure it's straight on my straight edge right here. So right in there, if you can see. All right, I'm gonna start sewing and I don't backstitch and that'll make sense in a few minutes. 
So I sew until I get to a quarter inch. I actually have a mark on my walking foot that tells me that, but if you don't, you can always mark this with a ruler. You just want a quarter inch from, get my purple thing here, from this edge here, so a quarter inch. That's where you're gonna stop sewing. Next, you're gonna pivot. So you're gonna lift your presser foot and pivot to 45 degree angle and then sew off the edge. Now this part is always tricky for people, so I'm gonna show it to you uh, twice. I'm gonna take my binding and fold it like this. For the longest time, I pressed it like this and made a nice crease in this. You don't have to, but it's a good idea if you're just starting to get used to it. You can even finger press it. And I'm just lining it up at a 45 degree angle, just like I'm wrapping a gift. And then I take this, put it over here while holding this. And then I line this fold up with this edge and this edge, okay? And I like to put a clip in there just to hold it while I turn it. And at this point, I'm gonna start sewing right at that point, right at that edge, and then do a quarter inch and go down to this corner and do the same miter, which I'll show you so you can see it again. I don't backstitch, I just start sewing. Okay, I'm approaching the next corner here. So I'm going to stop sewing a quarter of an inch. And the reason I'm using a quarter inch is because that's the size we're using here. If you are using a bigger seam allowance, you'd stop at that seam allowance. So say you had a half inch seam allowance, you'd stop a half inch from the edge. Pick up my presser foot, turn it. So it's a 45 degree angle. And to find that, I'm just using the lines on my machine and stitch off the edge cut my threads, and we're gonna wrap a package again. Place it just like that, and then fold this back on itself like that. Make sure everything is straight and even. Put in a clip and sew around. And you're gonna do that on all four corners, including this first one that we started with you're gonna sew down to about here. So you're gonna leave yourself some gap here. When you get to this point, do not backstitch. Okay, we're ready to go. I'm gonna move these out of the way. I did trim this down so it was a little bit more manageable. And then I'm gonna pick a spot in here, I don't know, somewhere in the middle, and I'm gonna put a pin and make sure that's straightish. Next, I'm gonna take one of my ends, and I know that this is one and a quarter inch. I'm gonna take half of that and measure over five eighths. So half of one and a quarter is five eighths. And I'm gonna line up that five eighth mark on my pin. And then I'm gonna mark it with a pen, just like that, okay? Then I'm gonna move this one out of the way and do the exact same thing on this side, lining it up so it's one, two, three, four, five, and marking it. These are our cut lines, so. Now I'm just gonna go in and cut on that line like that and on this line like that. Okay, now that we have that cut and ready to go, we know that these overlap by the exact size of our binding strips, which is one and a quarter because we took half and half. And then I like to just mark it just to make sure. So I just took a pen so you can see that right here. This is the way I learn, this is the way I do it. I know you can use this as your template, but for me, this makes sense in my head and this is what I do. So we need to get these two ends joined somehow. So what I like to do is fold this up and use big clips and you can use clothespins, whatever it takes to get that bulk out of the way. So now I'm gonna take this one and I'm going to fold it down like that. And then I take this one and it has my line drawn on it, so I know that's the back side because we're putting right sides together. And I'm just going to place that on top of this one. And you know what? I need a little bit more give, so all I'm gonna do, because I didn't back stitch, is I'm gonna unsew this a little bit more. You don't wanna get into your miter, but you do have a little bit of room to do that. All right, that gives me a little bit more. So I'm gonna make sure I didn't twist it because I don't want this to be twisted. So it's back against being flat. Then I'm going to lay it on top here, right sides together, and I have that line so I know the edge of this needs to be on the edge of this. And these clips are just holding it in place for right now until I grab my pins. So now I'm gonna start pinning this. And I pin it as much as I can. Now I'm gonna sew from this corner to this corner. And if you notice, we made a backwards L, if that helps you remember, like this. 
and you're gonna sew on this corner here, from this corner to this corner. It's not pretty, but it works. And I'm sewing from this corner right here. If it helps you, you can mark it. That works too. And as I sew, I take the pins out because I don't want to sew over any pins. Take your time. Make sure this is all flat. So it's just sewn like that. Mine's not super, no, no, it is straight. Okay, <laughs> it's just sewn just like that. Next, I'm gonna unclip this and I'm gonna check it. Before I cut or do anything, I'm checking it to see if I did it right, which I did. See how that is? I did it right, yay! Now I'm gonna set that seam. And I'm trimming off the part that's away from what I just sewed. So I'm actually doing the seam allowance. I'm just trimming it. All right, and then I'm just gonna press that seam open because I want it to lay nice and flat. And then I go back to the machine and sew the rest of this. Okay, so our next step, now that we have this all bound and the hard part's over, the scary part, I like to give it a good press to set those seams because you know that's me. And next we're going to just push these out, just like that. And yeah, I know that the edges are kind of weird because we have those corners that we have to uh, miter. No big deal. Okay, so this is all pressed outward. We're gonna flip it over. This is where the fun kind of begins. I'm gonna fold this in and press it just like that. And I just fold it to the edge of my batting. It wants to roll in, so it works beautifully. And then we flip it like this. And I'll put some clips in it. Just like that. And then I go to the next one and make sure that that's mitered and turned in. And it, honestly, it goes, it, it automatically does it kind of for you. So it's so easy. And I'm gonna fold in this side and fold that in and press as I go. And when you get to the last corner, it really, it just folds right in for you. It's, it's awesome. It's a great technique, just like that. And at this point, you can do it however you want. If you want to machine stitch this down, that's fine. I like to do it by hand, which is what I'll do. I'll make sure it's nice and secure. I might even use a little touch of glue in there to hold it down while I hand stitch it. But that's it, then it'll be done. How stinking cute will this be? Okay, here it is. Isn't it cute? All done. Here's the Valentine's Day one hanging in my kitchen. I will make sure to link those hangers. I love them, I have a few of them in my house and I'll link that below. I love how this turned out. And I just put a hanging sleeve on the back. And if you're not sure how to do the hanging sleeve, I do have a tutorial on a mini heart quilt that you can see how I do make that hanger. So you can check that out. So next, we are going to finally, finally make a placemat. There it is. And it's a faux binding. So it's not really a binding. You can see it here, but it looks like a binding from the front. I'm gonna show you how to make that. And then I'm gonna show you a different way to make a placemat. And I'm gonna show you a table runner. And then we're gonna, have all of our five projects done. So stick with me and I will walk you through it all. This is the placemat section that I decided to use for this placemat. So what we have to do is square this up and we're gonna square it up as best as we can, including as much of the white as we can. Now, if you're making a bunch of placemats, you're gonna to wanna to have a consistent size. So you're gonna pick out all of your placemat pieces, whether it be all six or just a couple, and you'll be cutting it to the smallest one. So when you're squaring it up, because we know this isn't square, right? When you're squaring it up, you're gonna square them all up and then whichever is the smallest, you're gonna cut the rest down to that, if that makes sense. So I'm gonna grab my ruler and show you how I do this. And I am gonna use my big ruler for this one. What I'm gonna do is, again, I'm lining up my ruler, these lines on it, on the writing. That's what I want to be straight. These shamrocks all around, I don't have to worry about that because they're just tossed about, right? So there's no necessary pattern that you need to follow or straightness. And when you're looking for a panel to buy, keep that in mind if you're not using one of these. I don't want this green. Again, I know it's not straight, it's just gonna mess me up. So I'm gonna go to the design and... I think like right 
there. So I'm making sure this is straight, this border around St. Patrick's Day is straight, and I'm focusing on the middle. Once I have it to a spot that I like, I'm gonna cut off one of the edges because I know that that edge is then gonna be straight. And actually, you know what? We can even cut off this edge too. Let's do that. So I'm gonna re-straighten it up. There we go. I think I'm good. So I'm gonna cut this edge and this edge. All right, now that I have those two straight sides, I can even up the other two just by turning this around. Well, you can see how wonky that one is. And I'm going to just line it up. And another thing I wanna mention is you want the same distance from the center out. So you're also paying attention to that. So I see that this is two and a half inches. So I'm gonna move that down a little bit to make sure I split the difference. It takes some finagling, but it really is worth it in the end. Our next step is to measure this and you just take it down here. We'll see where we're at. It's about 17 and like a eighth, which isn't real lucky, not like the last time, and 10 and three quarters. So we need to add borders to this, just really skinny borders. That's gonna give us our faux binding. I like to cut one and a quarter inch strips and sew them on and then trim it down. But if you wanna save some fabric, you can do a little less. And this will make sense in a moment. And I have one here, just the same. So these are the borders. And what I'm gonna do is sew on my side borders first, press towards the border, and then sew on my top. And I'll meet you back here. Okay, our borders are all done and pressed out. How nice, it looks so great. All right, so we're gonna quilt this, but we're gonna quilt it a little differently because we're just gonna put the batting and the top together. We don't worry about a backing for this one. So just line this up, press it nice and good. You can adhere it with some 505 spray or you can throw some pins in it, but I find it doesn't ship that much. So I'm going to just go ahead and quilt it. We're gonna go all the way past the borders because you want everything to be held nice and tight. So you're just gonna quilt away. Okay, it is all quilted. I'll show you the back. It's just a serpentine stitch that I used and then a straight stitch. I just wanted to be a little fancy with this one. And the serpentine stitch is in my machine. It's one of the preloaded stitches. You could use some decorative stitches too if you want, whatever you'd like. Look at how cute it looks. Next, we're going to trim down the sides. I personally like to trim them down to three quarters of an inch because we are gonna have some seam allowance in there. So that's gonna give me a half inch faux binding. If you want it smaller, you can just trim it down a little bit more. If you want it bigger, you can trim it down to be a little bit bigger. This is just my preference. You don't wanna go super small, however, because we are gonna be turning it outside right after we sew it, which will make sense in a moment. So I'm gonna trim this down to three quarters of an inch all around. I know I sewed straight. I know my panel's straight. My edges might be a little wonky from quilting. That's fine because we're gonna trim it down. So to do that, I just take a ruler and I put the three quarters of an inch line on the sewn edge, which I know is straight. And I do that on two sides. If you have a bigger ruler, you can use it. Okay, and I'm gonna trim that down. Turn this and I'll start like right here. Pull that away. All right, two of my sides are done. Look at that, it looks so good. All right, I'll turn this one and we'll do the same here. Again, I'm doing three quarters of an inch so it should all line up really well. All right, I'm gonna turn this side. Turn this side. And there you have it, your placemat top. Look at how cute it is. It's all ready to go and it's ready to be finished. Super easy to finish. So the next thing you're going to do is place your backing, which is cut the exact same size as your top that you just made. And you're gonna place it right sides together, just like we did with the pillow. Even it out, get rid of any of these threads that are hanging around right here. Oh, I did forget to mention, if you want this to really look like a faux binding, use the same fabric that you used for the border on the back because it will all blend in. I didn't do that with my sample, uh, you can see, that when we sew it down on top here, it doesn't look as much as a faux binding as 
it would if I had used the same fabric on the back. I just wanted you to be able to see it really well. That's why I did it this way. But with this one, you're gonna see what I mean about it blending in. It's gonna line this up, pin it into place so it doesn't shift. And sew around the outside, leaving an opening. And I'm going to leave an opening at the bottom. Yeah, and that's the bottom. And I'm gonna mark it because I don't want to forget to leave an opening. So right around here. And since we're not stuffing it, it doesn't have to be as big of an opening, so it's not as much of a pain to close it up. Okay, so I sewed all the way around, and I also clipped my corners just like we did on the pillow, and now it's time to turn. The opening's kind of small, and I did make sure, I don't think I mentioned this, backstitch at the beginning and the end of that hole so it doesn't pull apart when you're turning it. So I'm just gonna reach in and do it. It's gonna take some finagling because it is a smaller hole, but we can get there. Okay, now that I have it mostly turned out, I'm just gonna take my purple thang thing. Purple thang thing? I don't know. It's called the purple thang, but I keep calling it a purple thang thing, so that's, that's its new name. I'm just gonna go in and push that out. Those corners. So now I'm gonna press it and get it nice and flat so that edge is nice and crisp. We're just going to slowly make sure that's pushed out and use the iron to press it really nice, just like that. We're gonna go around all the edges doing that. So I pressed it really, really well, and I still have this opening that I want to close. And I'm just gonna turn it in, and you can use your machine. I'm really bad at using my machine to do a little top stitch on a corner though, so I like to do it by hand. So for now, I'm just gonna put a little bead of glue on there to hold it into place while I show you the next step. And I like to use this glue here. I just use Elmer's, but I got these wonderful tips at a quilt show, and I don't even know who makes them, but they're great. I'll try to find out. So I'm just gonna go in here and put a little bit of glue. Actually, we're gonna put it this way. I'm gonna glue down the quilted fold first. And then quilt, go down my edge. All right, once that's dry, all I'm going to do is stitch in the ditch right along this edge here. That's it. And that's gonna give you that faux binding look. It's gonna be awesome. Now, to make it even better, you can use a matching thread, which is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna use a green, so you can't even see it. It's gonna kind of blend in. It's gonna blend in in the back, and it's gonna look like a binding. And here it is all finished. Look at how cute it is. Oh my goodness, I love this look. Isn't this great? All right, next we are going to make the flat placemat, just like this one. So it's nice and flat and wonderful. Let's get started on that. What you do with this one is a little bit different. We use a fusible fleece and I fuse it on before I trim this up. So you can see that here. And I actually didn't have enough fusible fleece, so I just pieced it. I just butted them up against each other and fused it on. Once it's fused on, now we trim it down. And again, we're gonna use those words to be our guide and trim it down to the size that we want or the size that we can get, okay? So let's do that now. And I'm gonna do it the exact same way that I did the other one. How nice is that? I get so excited. <laughs> All right, so now we are going to make this and we're gonna take our backing, any fabric that you have, and it could be coordinating or not, we're gonna place it right sides together just like before and stitch around the outside leaving an opening. Okay, so now this is sewn all around. I tucked in that edge and just glued it and it's all glued. So our next step is to top stitch and we're gonna to top stitch about an eighth of an inch in and that's also gonna catch that opening. And then I like to do some fancy top stitching which you can see here. So I just measure in, what did I do? I think. Let's see, I measured it an inch and a half and drew that out so it made a line that I could top stitch on. You can see it on the back here. And that works really well. It makes it just nice and crisp and finished. Now, because we have these words here, I really don't want to top stitch through the words, so I'm going to probably measure in, let's see, an inch from the edge. Can I go an inch and a quarter? Oh, I can go an inch and a quarter. We'll do that. An inch and a quarter from the edge. Flip that around. And I'll just take a marking pencil, pen, whatever you have that you can erase. This is one that is a heat re erase. And I'm gonna just draw a line. That's gonna be my stitch line. And I'm gonna do that all the way around. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna sew that eighth of an inch in from the edge and sew this top stitching. 
I'm gonna use a 3.2 stitch length on the top stitching because it just makes it really look nice. And I like to use the matching thread for the top. Now you will see it on the back. For me, that's not a big deal. You could also put a green in the bobbin or a matching thread in the bobbin if you want. Okay, it's finished. Look at how nice that looks. I love this look on a placemat. It's nice and flat. You know, your dishes don't float around and get all bouncy. <laughs> and I, I just love the way it looks. It's a really simple technique too. If you want it a little more rigid, you could just use a interfacing that works too. But I do like the fusible fleece because it does give it a little squishiness too. All right, our next project is the table runner. Now the one I'm gonna make is a little bit smaller than this but I'll explain all that as we get started with it. And we're gonna take all those techniques we learned, or most of them, to make this. For the table runner, I just took two of the placemat panels, you can see it here, and I put one at each end facing outward. And I made the middle as big as I wanted it. I am giving this as a gift and I wanted it to fit my friend's table, so I asked her how big she wanted this and this is what it came out to with the math. I'm gonna make the St. Patrick's Day one for my own table, however. I'm gonna use these two placement panels. The middle part I'm going to cut down a lot smaller because my table's a lot smaller and I already did that. Let me show you. So I cut these panels exactly the same way where I lined everything up and cut them. The only difference is I made sure they were the same size. So I cut them and then whichever one was the smallest was my template. This was what I was going to use for the other one. And I actually think this was the smallest one and I cut this one down to size. I'm not sure. Anyway, you want these to be the same size and they're gonna go at either end. And then my middle I picked is just the width of these panels and the length I want. So I'm just gonna sew these on the end and press towards the middle. So the runner top is all sewn together. It's ready to go and you can use any of the techniques to finish this that you want. I showed you a whole bunch, so you have lots of options. I'm gonna go ahead and finish this and I will show you the final product in YouTube time, which is like a few seconds. <laughs> it's finished, look how cute this is. Isn't this adorable? It's gonna look great on my table for St. Patrick's Day. Love it, love it, love it. Can't wait to make more. I'm kind of addicted to these. I wanna buy more and more and more of these because they're so much fun. You can make so many projects and we have so many that we made. I mean, this is crazy. So it was a, one panel and about two yards of fabric and then some batting, which just was great. I hope you enjoyed this. If you like this longer form video that I made, I don't usually make them this long, but if you liked it, let me know. I'd love to hear. I'd also love to hear if you're gonna make these because they're so cute. Also make sure you check out that link to Missouri Star Quilt Company in the first comment below. I hope you have a wonderful day. I hope you take some time to sew and I'll see you real soon. Bye.